I've been bouncing off the walls. My mistakes, I can't count them with my palm. My fists make a big crackle in your jaw. I'm in Molly World with my bitch dancing with the guards. Cancer tweet my lips, it's split okay, cancel so, on my rocks. Yeah, thank you so much top. for agreeing to do this interview with me for JDU. Thank you. Am I am I if, am I high enough? Am I low enough? Can you hear me well? Yeah. Or, okay. All right. Cool. 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 Yeah, I can hear you well. Thank so, you. So, as we were talking before, like I was just curious, what what have you been doing during quarantine? Like, what have you been doing during twenty twenty? You know, just inside all day. Inside all fucking day. Can I cuss? Uh, I think so. This is just gonna be on our Instagram, <laughs> so it's fine. All right, all right. I'll, I'm I'm a chill. But um, <laughs> um I just been kind of just trying to develop myself as a mm-hmm. human being uh develop a plan for my work and 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 just want to just get better as a mm-hmm. musician and as a human you know that's kind of just been what I've been doing during quarantine and I've been just yeah, and and trying to figure out a plan, just how to move forward with with life, my life, my music, and and how all of that works together. You know, I'm just trying to just trying to do better, be better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's it, honestly. And 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 I've been re- I've been reading a little bit. Mm-hmm. Got a little more uh, radicalized. I've been trying to I've been trying to get to the money more. You know, just trying yeah. to yeah, trying to get some money. Cause uh, yeah, I we were talking about working, and I don't really want to work for a conglomerate either, though. Mm-hmm. But I'm also starting to feel like I don't really want to work, though. Like if I can, yeah, I feel you. you know, like if I can create something where I can plant, you know, and just like just kind of go the farmer route of 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 being a musician, just plant your own seeds and just like tend to your garden and feed mm-hmm. yourself and live modestly and 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 just you know take care of of yourself and your people that's that's it honestly that's that's all i've been thinking about you know yeah 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 i feel you i feel you 100 you know but I mean? that's like one book that i don't know was like meaningful to you in 2020 because you say you got radicalized i was just curious yeah. like of a few books or like a few personalities that you like i don't know you were inspired by yeah um i'm trying to think okay so i read that book i didn't even finish it though Two books. It's this book. I wish I could just bring it. It's like it's like basically like the history of the Panthers from beginning to end, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it was one of those books that I always had. Every time I got on a plane, I just cracked that book open, put it away, get back mm-hmm. on the plane a week later, and crack it back open again, and mm-hmm. close it, don't touch it, you know. But then I was I just really read it like I read it this past year, and I was like, yo, these they put in work, you know, they Mm -hmm. put in a lot of work. And then, um, this, uh, Angela Davis book called, uh, what's it? Like our prisons obsolete. Yeah. Our prisons obsolete. That's yeah. That's how it's called. Yeah. That one too. That's a good book too. And I was like, just in my head, I I don't know. I always just tell people that like, nah, like prisons are whack. Like they shouldn't exist. But then they'd be like, so what do we do? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, you know, yeah. I don't really know, but then I uh, kind of read through that book and, and kind of started developing my own ideas and stuff. Like, Angela, mm-hmm. they, she's a really smart woman. I really have a lot of respect for her and what she's done. So that, um, you know, Haile Selassie, reading into his works and his, his um, just his speeches and, and, and what his presence as a... Mm-hmm you know, did for humanity and black people. Marcus mm-hmm. Garvey, you know, them mm-hmm. two always positive influences in my life. But I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I I have a lot of respect too for Angela Davis. I've read a, a, a few of her stuff and just trying to like reread it and understand yeah. if like from like my perspective, you know. It's just like as you said, like I have so much respect for her. I watch yes. her stuff on YouTube too. Yeah. She's so just I don't know, so influential. Just so much respect for her. A lot of respect for her. She's really just articulate in the things that she cuz mm-hmm. like, most of the people from that era didn't make it. You know, like yeah. they, for some reason or the other, like something happened to them. Like 
and they were sabotaged. And that shit is like morale destroying, you know? Like that could destroy somebody's spirit. But she's still here. And she's Yeah, she's still here. here. Like isn't she like sixty or something? Something. She's she's old woman, but she looks she looks youthful, you know? So it's Exactly. Like, yeah, so that shows like it's like you do good and come back to you type of shit. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, I've been trying to catch up on my reading during quarantine, but I just I couldn't. I don't know. I have really short attention span, and, and I'm trying to, but you know, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just getting better. But also, I know, like just before quarantine, you had that J Train show. Can you tell me more about that? Oh yeah, shout out Ade, my friend Ade Hakeem in uh, in New York. He's from the Bronx. Mm-hmm. He, he was putting on shows like before that, like and on the train, and you know, people would come through and just like you know, do this thing, so I came through. That's the last show that I was really nervous to play. I was nervous because I was really playing for strangers that didn't come to listen to music, you know? Yeah. Who wanted to go home or go to the store or go this place or that place. And I was like a musician on the train, just like without their permission, giving them music, you know, which is kind of, in a sense, nerve-wracking to me, but Yo, that was really fun. I had a, I met a lot of cool people, a lot of mm-hmm. friends that I'm still cool with to this day. Yeah, yeah that shit was, that was tight. Yeah, that was that was so cool. I remember seeing that on Instagram, and at first I thought it was planned and people had to buy tickets. But now that you tell me you play for strangers, that's such a like that's such a cooler experience than if crazy? people were actually paying for this. Isn't that crazy? People, I mean, people came and they were like, "All right, look, we're gonna meet here. If you want to come and watch the show." Come here. I don't know what time it was. I'm gonna say like fucking seven o'clock. Come here at seven mm-hmm. o'clock on this stop. We're gonna meet and we're gonna go on this train together. We're gonna link together. And everybody's like, all right, bet. But yeah. everybody else, which was it was it was a group of us, you know. But mm-hmm. everybody else was on the train as a stranger, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And I was like, okay, you know. Before I got on, I was like, like, mm-hmm. oh, we got a stranger. They might not even like hip hop, or they might like some shit. They might feel a type of way. Yeah. They're gonna like it, they're not gonna like it. I don't know. I was kinda just but I don't know. It was really it was it was nice. It was great. Mm-hmm. You know? It's cool. Yeah, the show was in New York, right? Yeah, New York City. Yeah, I was just like I, I was curious if you felt like the atmosphere was different from like the Philly shows that you usually yeah. played. All the time. The New York shows I I mean all the New York shows do have a different atmosphere. I can't really mm-hmm. put my finger on what what it is though, but I think it's just the people though. Like New York City people are very like sharp people. Yes. You know, so they they kind of just they have that thing about them. They know what they like. They know what they don't like. You know, and they know it pretty quickly. You know, mm-hmm. and they don't. They can they can sense bullshit as well. That's another mm-hmm. thing. So, but Philly people can too. Yeah. And I think I think. Playing in Philly prepared me to play anywhere in the world, I think. Like, mm-hmm. in my head, I can play anywhere because I started out in Philly. And all my shows weren't good all the time. Like, I, I played some really bad shows in Philly before. Like, I played shows and I was like, I don't know if I want to play a show again, you know? Because mm-hmm. Philly, Philly will make you feel that way. Like, you just kind of have to be your best, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? So I was like, kind of, I don't know. It was, that's kind of how I was feeling, but... Yeah, it's a different atmosphere. I can't even really put my finger on what is different about it, but it's just the people, I think. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. Yeah, New York totally has a different energy. But when mm-hmm. I came here, people told me, like, Philly's a chiller version of New York. But I can see it, but at the same time, they're so different. Different. It's just a different atmosphere. Mm-hmm. You know, because they went through different shit. People in New York went through different shit than people in Philly. Like, people in Philly... You know, experience their own set of, of, of traumas, you know? Yeah. 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 And I was just curious, like, you're not you're not from Philly, right? No, I'm not from Philly. So how did you, like, what was your journey coming to Philly? Like, where are you from and how, yeah. like, when did you come to Philly? I don't think, I'm from, I'm from Portland, Oregon, right? Mm-hmm. So that's where I was born. But then I moved from Portland, Oregon to Indiana. Then I moved to Idaho. Then I moved here to Delaware, you know, mm-hmm. and then I've been here for a few years and I fuck with it. But the whole I've been making music since I was a child, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but I have friends in Philly, so I have like my friends in Philly, and then I know Philly is a place where things are like really happening. 
And I just mm-hmm. feel like as a musician, as a lover of music, even just like outside of being a musician, just loving music, it's like, okay, if you want to go see some shit, go to Philly, you know? Yeah, true. <laughs> Very true. And that's, that's like my homie Jordan started going to school out there. Mm-hmm. So I started riding with him to shows and we just, you know, I just be out there just drinking. But really, I was just in there just peeping the scene and peeping how, because in a sense, like when you step, step into like a new scene, it's it's like like an intimidation thing. Like you kind of feel like, am I good enough? Am I worthy enough to be here type of shit? You know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's my own kind of perception. I kind of just want to peep the surroundings and, and, and peep how people are doing shit. Yeah. In relation to my own self and kind of just like see what it takes what are people doing you know what what's everybody doing that was my that's like always been my thing when i moved to a new area it's like okay what are people doing here you know and like related to myself and 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 i don't know but i stepped into philly and i saw a lot of good stuff but i also felt like i could do something there like oh yeah like this is a place that i can show you know show my my worth in a sense mhm yeah. What are like some um some people from Philly that like or do are the people who help you with your projects from Philly or like around Philly or childhood friends or yeah. just I don't know just tell me like about the people who help you with your projects with your work. Um, I have everywhere though. Like I have some people in Philly that be helping me. My homie Yonki is in Idaho. Mm-hmm. He helps me. Uh mix projects he helps me put them together and like make things sound good he and he and i work really closely like on everything essentially mm-hmm. uh, even if it's just like yo peep this like more so like he's probably gonna be the first one to hear it you know yeah but then um i have him uh my friends uh danny uh his, he goes by el Grill. He 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 and I make beats together and it was just fun to hang out and, and work mm-hmm. with him. And he's I learned a lot from him and uh my friend Mulch, I learned from him and, and, and um who else? My friend I have a friend named Joe and he, he helps me like a lot with like figuring out um I guess what to say, like like behind the scenes shit, you know, like the quote unquote business shit. Mm-hmm. Come, you know, like um uh, a lot of people though there's a lot of people my friend elijah i work closely with but he's upstate new york my friend free he's here in delaware with me mm-hmm. uh it's a lot of people man it's a lot of, a lot of heads a lot of heads i i work with a lot of people but you know they kind of just yeah. you know just they they're really important everybody kind of plays an equal role in in in, in my shit you know mm-hmm that's so good that your team's like from everywhere. So they yeah. have like different influences from everywhere. I th- I saw that like your friend that you were talking to Elijah just dropped something and you're on there too. Yes, yes. A lot of um, flea tape. He just dropped that flea tape. Mm-hmm. And today, today he dropped the deluxe version of the flea tape, which is crazy. It's like three mm-hmm. songs. But yeah, him and I, like he, he helped me a lot in terms of just figuring out how to move as an artist and confidence, uh, you know, he was the one that was like, yo, look, like, I know you might feel some type of way, but you are somebody that is important. Mm-hmm. You know? All right. I'll accept that, you know? Yeah. And, <laughs> but like, yeah. So, you know, yeah, he, he's, he's nice though. Elijah's nice. Him and I work closely all the time. We have a lot of work together, a lot of music together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now, like, I want to ask you about your mo- most recent stuff from yeah. time. I yeah. saw that it's like a collection of stuff of like right. your older stuff that you put together now. Yeah. How come? How come this happened? How come you put your older stuff together? Because people don't know about it. I just wanted I uh, wanted to just be a last push of, of of that stuff. People, I think it would be interesting, you know, like introduce the stuff. And plus, they weren't on kind of streaming services before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to you know make them out there because people would ask me about that. So I would just give it to them, but. At the same time, they they got reintroduced to a whole new group of, of people that didn't know that they existed. Like people would be like, "Yo, this this new this new stuff is hot," and I'm like, "It's not new." Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that's that was the purpose too. You know, I, I I was surprised by how many people didn't hear the stuff that was on that before. You know. Yeah. So. It yeah, it's just like 
I listen to it a lot of times and it's just like the instrumentals have such a specific sound to yeah. your stuff but at the yeah, same time yeah. like you can see that it's kind of older but yeah. not really like it has yeah. like a really specific your sound compared to like other yeah other stuff and yeah. I don't know you you have like some features on there I saw of course, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I don't know it's just like really raw really authentic i really like it i really like like this from time thank project you. Thank you. that's really thank good you. Thank you. but yeah do thank you, you like because you said like you want people to like this is kind of the last push do you like intend to change your sound or do something different or just you, you just wanted to put like this whole thing together yeah both mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, i'm gonna do i'm gonna change it up i'm gonna make some new shit mm -hmm. I, you know i just i don't know i don't I don't even like when I play shows, a lot of my music that I play at the shows aren't like out. I don't really play old music all the time. Yeah. I just, like want to just keep things exciting for myself. And plus like one thing that I do might not be, it's definitely not the whole scope of me as a, as a musician, you know? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So I just kind of, I guess in a sense it was a, a way for me to just be like, here, this is, this is this. And I guess even the time, the the title was intentional. You know, it's like a, from yeah. a time, like a specific time and place. So this is that from then, and everything further from now won't be that. So yeah. that you know, mm -hmm. it'll just be It's kind of like a like a like a transition, you know, towards like your newer stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. that's so cool. I love that. Exactly. Thank you. But so you're talking about shows like how do you yeah. see yourself now that you can't do as many shows <laughs> yeah it kind of sucks though it kind of sucks I, i miss shows I, shows are like a, a chance for me to hear how my music sounds in public because mm -hmm. i don't go outside and hear like uh my music on the radio yet or hear it at a club or at a party you know maybe somebody will play something but usually like if i'm playing a show i feel what it is for real in its truest sense i could look at somebody's face and see like what is happening in real time mm -hmm. you know and that is to me the that's the way music is supposed to be played it's supposed to be like a real fucking uh display at the time like moment to moment like how does this feel right and and yeah. shows are the best way best circumstance because you have everybody frozen in time when you play mm -hmm. music and shows, you know? And the, the sound systems allow for that to be a thing where you get to be, like, physically shook by these frequencies, right, that come out mm -hmm. of speakers. So I take that as an event. I, I, I take that as an opportunity to, like, to, to showcase and to test. I use shows as tests a lot. I play mm -hmm. something new. Sometimes I play songs I made a week before, you know? And then mm -hmm. I get to just be like, all right, this is, you know, how does this sound? Like, how does this sound like this? How does it sound like this? So I, I used to have so much fun. Yeah, and I, can't I bet. Yeah, I can't wait to go back. Like, the show that we played last time um, at Truck for Pedazzo's uh, release party, mm -hmm. that was the last show I played. And and subsequently, we played these live streams, and they just weren't as fun. I'm not going to lie. I didn't have fun doing those live streams. Yeah. Like, I have fun playing my music i love music you know in the live setting and i love hearing my friends hear it and, and looking behind me and people having fun looking in front and looking you know and seeing people jump or whatever the fucking you know people sweat you know when people just sweat yeah. and they're breathing and they're fucking all of that it's like a real it's like a joy but like live streams aren't that no more you know unless i was doing some type of performance art kind of thing and i haven't gotten to sit down and crap the uh a thing from scratch you know mm -hmm. so, it's not the same i might never do a live stream again i might i might just do it in this i might you know just like do some special shit like if i'm gonna do it again but i don't know yeah. i just, just want to get back to the shows like honestly i just want to get back to it. yeah i yeah. bet like live streams even like as an audience member feel so odd because at the same time like you see an artist that like you know they play their music but like you're not connected to anyone there it's just like it because i feel like it's such a complex experience with everyone there and if it's just like you and the artist and you just see them yeah. on the screen it's yeah. kind of uh, but you know this like uh, the most you can do right now so that's all i can do but i mean 
I kind of take pride in 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 my recordings. So right now, uh, I just want to focus on my recordings and focus on perfecting my 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 projects mm-hmm. and just making that the prime way that I connect musically. So then, when somebody can see me in person, a, a, a fan or just somebody who wants to come check out the music, then it's special again. You know, if we have to wait another year, you know. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm cool with just being like a guy in the shadows, you know, just like and just putting mm-hmm. on music, you know. So, yeah, but it's hey, I'm not knocking nobody that do the live streams and shit though. I think it's beautiful that. You yeah, know. true. Everybody, everybody has like their own ways, and everybody exactly. has their own ways to connect to to the audience and people yes. they want to play to and everything. So yes, yes. So to you know, me, just, I love yeah, it. yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, yeah. um. Also, yeah, I wanted to ask you. I saw you're part of a Bad Apple Commune, right? Yes. Yeah, tell me more, like how you got involved with them and everything. I saw like the whole Instagram page, and it uh, like it looks really cool. I just wanted to hear like more from you about that. Yeah. Um. Wow. It started at this uh pizza spot. We went to the show. Uh, me, Malkia, uh, High Noon, Huey. Jordan, uh, ah, who else was there? A couple other heads, and we we mm-hmm. was eating pizza after the show. The show was cool, but we really just got together, sat down, and really just like discussed reality mm-hmm. and reason with each other, and and and, and kind of just built. And we we're like, you know, we could. It could be a group, you know? And we liked each other's music and art, and we really just fucked with each other, and and it just felt good to be together, so we started Bad Apple. And it was funny, because we got kicked out that pizza spot, because they said that we were smoking in the bathroom. (laughs) But nobody was smoking in the bathroom. That was the crazy part. Nobody. So we were like, yo, look at this this bullshit that's happening to us. And then we kind of, it was like a fuel. Yeah, so that was fucked. That was like, two years ago but we're an art collective black art collective you know Mm -hmm. and um we're all abolitionists Mm -hmm. you know so it was it felt it felt good to just do revolutionary work through art because we sometimes uh kind of get into these modes of feeling like art can't be like truly revolutionary but or just you know like there's so much of, of having to play the game with art you mm-hmm. know, that it's hard to just really feel like you're doing good work all the time. But at the yeah. end of the day, we got together because it felt good and it felt good to just like be a part of something like that. And it's not done, you know, it's never going to be done. We're kind of just figuring out our place in this shit together, you know, and everybody's doing really good work individually. So it just mm-hmm. makes it all beautiful. Um, yeah, it's just it's just nice that you get to like, shared this like your artistic vision with people who have like similar artistic visions and then like like vision about life it's similar to yours so yes. that is like, i don't know it's just like always yes. having a community helps with everything even if that's it's art true. or anything you know that's it. that was our pursuit of, of community and, and the original goal was to build community shout out savan as well savan is a excellent excellent artist in bad apple uh mm-hmm excellent creative and um i believe he i believe they were there too they might have been there but i don't really i'm trying to remember that pizza spot they were there but <laughs> it doesn't matter it doesn't matter but yeah yeah so yeah that's the whole thing though was to build community and build a space where we could feel comfortable a being ourselves and b uh helping other people feel comfortable being themselves, right? Mm-hmm. And, and and opening this line of communication uh, between us and uh, the community that we lived in and, and, and that we were creating. Because a lot of the art in, in Philly is beautiful and it it just it's not made by people who are from Philly. I'm not even from Philly, right? Mm-hmm. So it seems like a lot of us can come into a space, create, take advantage of, of the surroundings and the situation and just dip you know but we kind of just felt like it's not like a wrong thing like we can't blame anybody for that but at the same time like how good would it feel it must feel amazing to just like give back to the community that gives to you yeah 
Mm-hmm. So that was kind of our our whole basis behind it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's just, like, so, so beautiful to hear. Because, I, of course, like, I knew about your group and everything. I just didn't know the backstory. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it it just sounds like a really really cool project. You like you you all are in touch still, right? Of course, yeah, we were in touch too. So. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Still, and you're talking about like revolutionary artists and every yeah. and everything. Like, do you have any like bigger artists that you think like is doing something that you would want to do, but on a bigger scale? Oh, that's a good question. Everybody has moment. Everybody's kind of. I'm inspired by a lot of what everyone is doing really inspired mm-hmm. by no name directly and how she's able to just like use her, mm-hmm. her phone. Like, I don't know if you've seen, but she's doing that. Uh, she's starting like a, like a community center, like a free center, right. Where everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Them. I saw, I saw that. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That I think is unprecedented. Mm-hmm. By a musician. Um, who else? I mean, in terms of artist development and helping out the, the, the black artists and looking out for the black artists, I think Jay-Z is really good. I think, mm-hmm. you know, even if I have my critiques of him as a, you know, as whatever, like, I have my critiques of everybody. Yeah. In that sense. But um, I think there's some things that he do that is really exceptional and 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 I, I admire and I, I aspire to be at that level of of, of you know, of giving yeah um, who else? i don't know i think historically more so than 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 currently i kind of look at musicians and artists you know like um like fella fella kuti mm-hmm. and bob marley two mm-hmm. people who are able to just like go home and 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 create a compound create like a place where people can know that a they are there they're real human beings in touch with their community creating their community and active in the changing of what's happening you know around Mm -hmm. them you know and just like really empathetic music musicians you know Mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of musicians get into a place of just like hubris they get they get their head swells up and they forget Mm -hmm. where they come from they forget who they are you know and and like and I think that's more prevalent, like, the higher up you go, you know? Yeah. But that doesn't really matter, though. Like, I really want to just start doing shit that, uh, that you know, that makes sense. Like, yeah. Why, you know, just going to make sense in, 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 in a lot of ways, you know, just help and in, in, in further up the conversation about what life should look like, you know? I kind of want to be a vessel for that, just like how... How 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 should things be? What what do we do? And it's not just like a one person thing. I can't do that, you know. I yeah, yeah, for sure. You know? I just want to more so than anything, just give funding and give uh, uh, you know, shelter to people who can do that. Make sure people are funded and well taken mm-hmm. care of. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, I I also like I learned a lot from No Name because she started. I think she started like a book club on Twitter. Yes. Yes. Yeah, she started like a whole book club and I remember she posts so like so much informational stuff. Like yes. I learned so much just just by looking at her Twitter. Yes. Yes. And That's it's just yes. Yeah. She yes. does I feel like when you look at her, like she really expresses her opinions really differently, if that <laughs> makes sense. Like yes. in a in a in a new way. And she's not I don't know, like she's not I feel like this is really cheesy to say, but she's like she doesn't give a fuck about criticism. Yeah, you know, which is which is like a good thing for what she wants to do. And I, I don't know, she's yeah, she's she's really really cool. She does a lot yeah. of good things. Yeah, I like people don't give like people might have their criticisms of what they have to say about her, but very few people in 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 a position like hers have been able to like push revolutionary mm-hmm. ideas effectively, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And no matter what you think about anything that she's done or anything that she's said, she has been effective in radicalizing young people mm-hmm. and then and taking ideas. Because it's hard to criticize Obama, right? It's hard yeah. to criticize um, any president that can be seen as, or, you know, any kind of government official that might be seen as, like, a progressive person, right? Yeah. She'll look and say, that's not enough. 
mm-hmm. people don't like to hear that. People like to hear that's good enough, right? Yeah. So yeah, I fuck with Nona Hendo. She raw. Yeah, yeah. She's raw. She saw, always pushes for like more and more, which is really more. good. Like more people should do that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And she doesn't look at it and say, oh, these people should do things for us. She looks at it as we can do these things for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the change in understanding that we need. Like, as 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 much as we like to say, oh, like, the internet gives us so much this. We have so much this. Look at how far humanity's come. We still look to people to do things for us that we should be able to do for us. Like, our community is everything. Like, we shouldn't be having to ask people for food, you know? Or yeah. like, or like, oh, why does money, you know, why is this like this? Like we, me, you, 10 other people, if we all live on the same block, we could take care of each other. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like she really, like she presents all her, all of her ideas really realistically, even yeah. though somebody, even though everybody's like, yeah, you couldn't do them. But she's like, no, yeah, you actually you could do them. Facts. That's exactly facts. Yo. Yeah. yeah. That's why I like her. I like her a lot. She's really intelligent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I I like her a lot too. I I remember I like randomly discovered her music too in high school, and I yeah. didn't really listen to that much hip hop in high school. But I, I don't know. I just like I really like her sound. But now I see that she's involved in everything, and it's just mm-hmm. I don't know. She's just really inspiring. And you talk about like artists you like that are involved in the community. What are like some artists you like sound wise, or like what they did with their musical vision? You know. Um... I guess I like a lot of musicians, but, but yeah, two, I know you said you you said you're a big lover of music. I was just asking somebody like, who's your favorite? What's your favorite yeah, song? It's just super yeah, hard to to choose. Uh, yeah, it's hard for me to choose. But I guess when we talk about sound, I like a lot of musicians. Okay, so I really like Cities of Eve. There's this musician called Cities of Eve, and he's from Memphis, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And he uh, just the way he uh thinks about his music and the way that he goes about uh creating you know the sounds that he uses and the way that he uses them intrigued me a lot you know Earl was a big influence of me too Earl Sweatshirt's a big influence another reason like he his just his the way he goes about creating and 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 his vision and the way he just mm-hmm. sticks it out it's very like it's like almost like a trying to really think of the best way to say this like he knows how to just do what he does Mm -hmm. and that is nice and 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 fella fella kuti and marley like because to me i've reached this point where i'm just like okay what can i do to make sure that i am making powerful music right Mm -hmm. like that's kind of where my thinking has been now is like if i can use the sounds that i have and and make the best out of them. It's like a slingshot and a rock, right? They're not powerful mm-hmm. until you put them together, though. So it's like words and sound, words, sound, and power, right? It's like how what do you do to put them together in the best way, the best like, the best like formula to make it just explode, and not explode in terms of popularity, but explode in terms of like the force, you know, and and getting your point across as accurately as possible, you know, using mm-hmm. the best words using the best, you know, just using everything the right way, you know, because there's a way you can say a word as a, one way and it's the same word. You can use a, you can say it differently one way than you said it another way, but one will carry more weight than the other, you know, yeah. it's all about intention. And like, so I just like musicians who are really good at that. Like Jay Electronica is another musician who's really good at that. He can just like figure his, you know, just his 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 delivery. I don't know. He just knows how to make powerful music. That's the shit that's drawing me. Like, you know, like that's kind of that's my that's my thinking right now. So, so Jay Electronica, you know, Fela Bamali, Earl, yeah, Steve Um, yeah, you know, and Dean Blunt. It's another person who I really like. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I really like uh, Dean Blunt and Jay Electronica too. Jay Electronica just dropped something last year, right? With Jay Z, yeah, yeah, exactly. Did you, did you that sounded to really it? good. I like, I liked it a lot. Did you listen to it? Did you listen to that last song? It's like A P I D I something. You hear that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that joint nice. I like that song. That's a good song. Yeah, yeah. I honestly feel like I don't know. 
I feel like a lot of this just quarantine and everything, I, a lot of the artists, not necessarily that they ch that change their sounds, but they sound more, I don't know how to say, just like you said in the beginning, you know, that you're like, you, you spend more time finding yourself and just like mm -hmm. learning by yourself and blah, blah. I yeah. feel like everybody just comes from a different perspective now, just like more yes. raw, if that makes sense. The music's like more energetic, even though like we're yes. all burnt out from this quarantine. Yes. Yo, I I I made sure when I started playing shows in Philly, the one thing the sound that happened to me is that my music got stronger, like it got louder, it got more uh -huh. aggressive, you know. Like uh -huh. a, lot, a lot more force was put in the music. Before I make music songs like Volvo was made like when I was I wrote that joint when I was like nineteen or eighteen. But then I put it out like two years after that and now it's finally so like I wrote Volvo almost it's like over half a decade ago. I wrote that song in 2015, you know? Mm hmm And that's a more mellow type of sound, you know? And I still mm -hmm. go back to that, but even songs like Comet, which I made a couple years afterwards, like, it's just, like, more... It's like the, you know, when you play it live, it doesn't... The energy isn't, like, it's something that makes you want to just, like, really, like, from the ground up, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I just want to, like, activate people, you know? So in Philly, I learned how to activate you know people's senses yeah. through music you know and just like yeah so but that also comes with introspection too so i sit down and you listen to yourself and you you meditate and you and you, you cry you know and then you really just get to figure out yourself you know mm -hmm. and that can change your music drastically you know yeah. drastically you just sit in a room by yourself and you really think there's nowhere to go there's no party to escape to there's no nothing you might go out and get some shit but that's it, you know? That's yeah. Really it. I don't know. So it makes sense to me that, that people's music got more introspective. Like, it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, that's that's the word I was looking for. It got, like, way more introspective. And even when I read, like, I can see it in my writing, too. Because when Ooh. I write, like, it's way more introspective than before. I feel like people just, like, we're not about the surface level stuff anymore. Nah, just, oh, nah. we're going to get deep and actually, like, say something even though they did before it just sounds different like you were saying yeah and it makes sense that as a result i'm gaining more traction mm -hmm. because, like that's the that's not like to say it's a trend but people are getting more hip to that way of living you know like kind yeah of I, saw, I saw you had an article in pitch for it congrats for that yeah. somebody wrote about your song yo thank you yeah that was that was cool that was really that was like whoa like a reaffirming kind of thing it was nice yeah i like i love write-ups honestly like i like to read about what what people think about my shit mm -hmm. it's like what do you what do you what do you think you know yeah what do you think about my work yeah, you know because i show it to people but like you know when like such a big publication writes about it it's just like oh what are they gonna yeah. say you know yeah it was surreal i was uh i was i was flattered and honored i try not to get too hung up on it but uh it's i mean I get on Pitchfork a lot just to look at shit, you know? Sometimes I just, mm -hmm. like, try to find things on Pitchfork, see whatever. And I like how they have, they, like, every publication has their own little, like, their own little mind, you know? You can tell, oh, yeah, Pitchfork gonna fuck with this, or nah, they not gonna like this, you know? Yep, for yeah. sure. They have, like, they have such a, when I see their best new tracks or best new albums, yeah. I know, I know they're gonna like this specific album when I listen yeah. to it, or I know if they're gonna hate it. You just know, you just know, you just know. Mm -hmm. And, like, um... Oh, am I lagging a little bit? Uh, I think you're fine. Like, your audio is fine. Just the camera, a little bit. It might be from mm -hmm. my wife. I don't know. I live in a 24-floor building, so that might be why. Oh, shit. It's a big building. Yep. Nah, but, um, yeah. Nah. So, that's why it was kind of nice to just kind of see how, where I fit into their little mold. But it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's not even just about pitchfork, though. It's just about more people just getting, being receptive. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Because, like, like it, it's not necessarily just about the magazine. It's just, like, more people are going to see your name and actually, like, check out your work and connect with, with everything you're doing, you know? Yeah, that's cool. I want I want people to come come over and figure, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, what did I want to... I, I, I had this specific question. I had it, but it just, like, ran off uh, my mind. It's okay. Freestyle. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's just like, oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you. Because I, I remember when I, like, when I was uh, one of your shows, like, a lot of these, like, underground Philly artists, like, uh, Body Meat was there. 
And then like, oh my God. is it, is it, I don't want to pronounce his name wrong. Is it Pedajo? Pedazo. Pedazo. Okay. Like he yeah. was there too. Yes. And he had like a whole show. Like, are you, are you like, um, I don't know. Like, how do you, how do you see this like underground Philly scene? It's like you were saying, but like with specific names. Cause I know like you, you collaborated with Pedazo, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me and him, I have a, uh, a verse on his album, which is good. His album is fucking good. Yeah. I, I was really excited to be a part of that. He's just a great musician, great guy, too. He's just a person that I, I enjoy being around. Whenever we don't really see each other, but we talk, and he's, mm-hmm. really, he's just, like, a a good person. Uh, Body Meat is another person. We, we've worked on something before. But he's just an, a person who I looked up to, like musically, like in the sense of just being like, "Yo, this is hard," and and looking at his drums and 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 things like that, and just making my making me want to step up shit. But like, I think I don't know. I think Philly got the best music scene in the country. I mean, people could say New York is is good too, but I just think like the people that come out of Philly kind of end up changing the world. New York too. I don't want to put nobody against each other, but I think yeah. Philly's the best, honestly. I just think Philly's the best, and I think it's special. Like we have, um, like Orion Sun, Tiffany, like another person who I, uh, like I, I came up watching her shows, right? So I would go mm-hmm. to a show, and they would be playing it, and I'm just like, yo, my goal, right? I don't, you know, of course I want to be a musician but right now my goal is to fill up the basement mm-hmm. you know that's my goal right now and she was the one who i saw fill up the basement first first person i ever seen to fill up the basement to the point where people were up the stairs yeah so now fast forward a couple years later and that happened to me at the show that we were at mm-hmm. and it's like a life affirming thing like i don't know like the philly shows are special because People will tell you how they feel. Like, they'll show you how they feel. You look at someone's face when they don't like it. They're not going to play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Especially because, like, when I went to other house shows, I feel like everybody just, like, wants to tell the artist, like, oh, my God, I really liked it. Yeah. Or I, I really loved it. Just, like, ask you stuff. I, that yeah. was, like, a super unique thing here in Philly. Yeah. yeah that That's, like, a real Philly thing. Like, a lot of times other places, like, motherfuckers be too cool, you know? Mm-hmm. I've never really been a too cool kind of person. I'm more so, I'm leaning towards just, you know, like, just kind of just being a weirdo than being too cool, unfortunately. But I don't yeah. care, you know? Yeah, like, I'm, well, you know, exactly. I'd, rather, I'd rather just be myself. And I'd rather just mm-hmm. be honest with myself than with others. And, and you know, just kind of move with love, you know? Exactly. There's no yeah. need to be too cool or, like, too too trendy or anything, you know? Nah. Just like other people can be too cool. Of course, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that to other people. I mean, most of the time, people who are too cool don't be that cool. Ex- exactly. It, it it's just like an image <laughs> thing. Like if you're yeah. too cool, you don't need to say you're too cool. You know. Simple as that. It's that simple. You know, people mm-hmm. will tell you that you're cool. You don't gotta act like it all day. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know. It's just, but. Yeah, I just want to end on some, like, we were talking before we started this interview, just, um, just like for all the KDU listeners, just tell me uh, again about, like, all the Nigerian food you love, because oh, I didn't sure. know about Nigerian food, and I want, like, everyone to know about, like, the good Nigerian food. All right, check this out. So, we got, you going, you, you focus on Nigerian food, there's three things you really got to really, really, really look out for, right? So mm-hmm. there's pepper soup, right? Which is my personal favorite. We we love yams in Nigeria. You feel me? We we use yams for a lot of purposes. We pound yam and make fufu. Mm-hmm. Another another thing you got to look out for. But we also fuck with jollof rice. Those three things, fufu, jollof rice, pepper soup. Now, in the pepper soup, they're going to put something called goat meat in that shit. And that shit hit. Right. If you don't eat meat, Nigerian food really not for you, right? Yeah. But at the same time, like they like I've seen vegan Nigerian food, my own two eyes. Like that shit's real. Like like my mom will make me Nigerian food with no meat in it, right? So it's mm-hmm. yam soup. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's it's, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So what you need to do, look out for them three right there. But in general, Caribbean food, African food, 
next level. Yes, yes, I definitely agree. I was talking to you about how I tried, uh, how I tried like Ethiopian food, but then I tried like Jamaican and Haitian food. So good, just really. Good. I I gotta get on the like Nigerian train food now, so I have yeah, to try it ASAP. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we go to night if you want to ease in, start with the jollof rice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then yep. you go, then you get to the pepper soup, and then you get to the fufu. You know, if you want to mm-hmm. ease it. But if you want to jump in, you can go in any order. Fufu, pepper soup. Jello, <laughs> exactly, you know, exactly. Any, any, any way you want to go about it. Hey, yeah. but you know, the use of spices is my thing. Like how that shit just hit. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I really, I really have to try. Like, just I told you, just being here, all the cuisines. Like, I have to try them all. All as, of them. As much as I can. Mm-hmm. All of them. Look, let me know if you if you got some recommendations. Swing them to me. I'm gonna swing some as well. Mm-hmm. You gotta do. You gotta make sure you hit all bases. Yes, perfect. And yes. yeah, thank you so much for this interview, everybody. Just check out Z Ultra on Bandcamp, on Spotify, you're on SoundCloud too, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm everywhere, basically. I guess. I'm, yeah, I'm everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, I'm YouTube, everywhere. everywhere. All of that. I'm everywhere. Just type me in. You know, Z Culture. I'm there. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much.